The Miracle Mill by David O. Oyedepo Introduction When we were little children in the faith, we used to sing songs like, When I get to heaven, there will be no more sorrows, no more hunger, no more sadness. Everything was post-dated to heaven. We were taught that every good thing was going to be found when we get to heaven. But bit by bit, the mystery of God's will began to unfold and now the earth is beginning to take on a heavenly identity. That is, by the understanding of his will, you will disarm all principalities and powers. You will make an open show of the devil. You cannot keep on struggling on the earth. The more light you have, the more heavenly your life. If you appreciate the mystery of his will, you will live a heavenly life on earth. It is just like what has happened concerning physical things like technology. For instance, in the early days of radio communication, you needed to shout over, over at the top of your voice. But it is not like that anymore. Now you can talk clearly to somebody in another continent and the person by your side need not hear what you are saying. Communication has been made easier because of the better understanding of the technology required. Similarly, the things of the spirit that once seemed impossible and unattainable have become available for all through the unraveling of the mystery behind them. Apostle Paul tells us in Ephesians 3 verse 1 to 5, For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, what? How that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. The apostles and prophets are the custodians of the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven in every generation. Certain things were not known before, but through apostles and prophets, they are made known. The nearer we are to the end, the more of those mysteries will be unfolded, and the purpose is to disarm opposition and establish your position in the kingdom. The communion table, or what is called the Lord's Supper, is one of such vital mysteries for your dominion in the affairs of life. When you understand the mystery of the communion table, you gain mastery. You become a master, and this puts you in charge. If you can see, what I am talking about. It will service your body forever. You will live like an angel in terms of physical strength, vigor, and vitality. That is why I call it the Miracle Mill. It is not a church program. It is an instrument for science. It injects a new order of life into your system. When you tap into the miracle virtues it contains. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man, and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh, and drinketh my blood, dwelleth in me, and I in him. John 6 verse 53, 55 to 56. A combination of the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ is the highest 
order of nutrients your body needs. It delivers its mission with all precision. You cannot miss it once you understand what I am talking about. With the help of the Holy Spirit, I will be opening up the mystery of the miracle meal in this book. It will guarantee you a new experience every time you partake of the communion and deliver amazing dimensions of undeniable proofs to you. Chapter 1 The Ultimate Diet As far as God is concerned, the quality of what you eat determines the quality of life you bear. It determines the quality of health and the quality of vigor and vitality that is operational in you. In Psalm 103 verse 1 to 5, the psalmist said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. God satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your days are renewed like the eagles. The better the food you eat, the better the health you enjoy. Among the benefits of redemption is the provision of a spiritual menu that guarantees a sound body and flourishing health. When Jesus first introduced this meal, the Bible tells us that, And as they did eat, Jesus took bread and blessed and break it, and gave to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And they all drank of it. And he said unto them, This is my blood of the new testament, which is shed for many. Mark 14 verse 22 to 24. He told them, My flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. John 6 verse 55 That is, I am giving you the highest form of nutrients you will ever need anywhere in the world. Better than manna In John 6 verse 48 to 51, Jesus described the value of this meal. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The manna God gave Israel to eat in the wilderness was extraordinary and strange. Because the Bible says that there was not one feeble person among them, and their legs were not swollen for the forty years during which they ate the meal. Psalm 105 verse 37 Still it is nothing compared to what he is offering us today. The health and vitality of those men, women and children walking through the wilderness was supplied from the manner they were eating. That was angels food but the miracle meal is of a much higher quality than the one they ate. Jesus said, Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead, but I am giving you something superior to what they ate. When a man eats this bread, which came down from heaven, he will not die. Something 
must be supernatural about that bread. Jesus said, my flesh is meat indeed. That means it has no comparison in terms of nutritional value. Saying that his blood is drink indeed implies that it is the highest quality drink. When you eat and drink such good things, your strength is renewed as the eagles. Caleb partook of that manna from heaven and drank of the water that came out of the rock and he said to Joshua, As yet I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me, as my strength was then, even so is my strength now for war, both to go out and to come in. Joshua 14 verse 11 Forty years before, Caleb was among the spies that came down to Canaan, and forty years after, he was still as strong. If the inferior meal kept man going from strength to strength for forty years, then this superior meal will keep you going the remaining days of your life. That is why Jesus said, When you eat of his flesh and drink of his blood, you will live like him. God showed me the mystery of the communion through the teachings and life of Oswald J. Smith back in 1977. I have been servicing my system with this mystery since then. All my veins and my blood are in perfect order. That is partly why I can stand and lay hands on over 50,000 people in a day without sitting down. I have a food to eat that keeps me going with supernatural strength. That was the food of Smith Wigglesworth. He took it daily and he went to God full of strength and vigor at a good old age. When God opened my eyes to the flesh and blood of Jesus, I was so taken with it that I took it virtually every day. It answered to me in detail. All the weakness and sickness in me died, and life became increasingly more buoyant. This meal is designed for strength, health, and longevity. If you take it with the correct spiritual perspective, expect to be strong, healthy, and to fulfill the number of your days. Chapter 2 Nutrition Information During communion service in church, I tell the people, we are not here to partake of snacks. We are here to partake of a New Testament mystery that will give you natural mastery over all forms of weakness, all forms of sickness, and all attacks of death. The communion is one of the mysteries of God designed to actualize the flow of eternal life in your system. It is designed to renew the flow of that life that is immune to all forms of sickness and disease. Taking the miracle meal will only produce a miracle for you if you appreciate the place of understanding. In Psalm 82 verse 5 to 7, the psalmist said, They know not, neither will they understand. They walk in the darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. I have said, Ye are gods. And all of you are children of the Most High. But ye shall die like men and fall like one of the princes. Lack of understanding causes you to walk in darkness and lose control in the affairs of life. When you know and understand what God is saying and walk in the light of it, you live in the realm of the miraculous. When you are armed with knowledge 
of the value of the miracle meal and you have a requisite understanding of how it works you can practically apply yourself to it then you shall not die like men or fall like one of the princes that is why i will give you what i call the nutritional information about the miracle meal your depth of understanding of this provision ultimately determines your level of divine benefits from it the flesh jesus gave details of the nutritional value of his flesh when he told his disciples this is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die i am the living bread which came down from heaven if any man eat of this bread he shall live for ever and the bread that i will give is my flesh which i will give for the life of the world john 6 verse 50 to 51 anyone who eats of that bread which is his flesh shall not die something must be strange about that bread i will show you the significance of it using some graphic pictures from the scriptures like the rod of moses swallows up vanities looking at the story of israel's release from bondage in egypt there was a rod in the hand of moses called the rod of god this rod was put down before pharaoh and it turned into a serpent the magicians put their rods down and all turned to serpents also however the bible says the rod that moses put down swallowed up all the rods of the magicians and when moses took up his rod there was no excess weight of the other rods swallowed up showing that those rods were vanities they were non-entities from the prophecy of isaiah we understand that jesus is the original rod of god he is the rod that came out of the stem of jesse isaiah 11 verse 1 the interpretation of this in relation to the miracle meal is that when that rod goes into you in form of the flesh in the miracle meal it swallows up everything that is tying down your system or ravaging your body hey there's death in the pot there's another graphic illustration in second kings 4 verse 38 to 41 one of the sons of the prophet went out to gather herbs to add to their pottage for lunch he came back added the herbs to the food and all the sons of the prophet sat down to eat but as they tasted the food their entire body system turned upside down and they cried out to elisha there is death in the pot verse 40 death in the pot connotes the presence of poison in the food elisha's response was then bring meal second kings 4 verse 41 and when he threw the meal in the pot there was no more harm what he threw in swallowed up all poison in the pot neutralizes poison your stomach can be likened to a biological pot no matter how much you cook your food before eating when it gets inside you it is recooked that is why what you pass out as waste does not look like the kind of food you ate when you take food in it is reprocessed through digestion absorption and assimilation that is the recooking in your stomach your biological pot the flesh of jesus the bread of life 
is the covenant meal that neutralizes all body poisons in your biological pot. If the meal in figure could effect instant the poisoning of the body, then imagine what the original meal, the body of Jesus, will do. Most sicknesses are virus based. These viruses are microorganisms whose presence eats off your strength and diminish your health and vitality. One may also say that most sicknesses today are purely psychological disorders, imbalance in blood water content, imbalance in the pressure level, ETC. The flesh of Jesus serves to normalize all imbalance in your body, making you a sound and strong dweller of the earth. When you drop the meal into your pot, the harm in it will be neutralized. That is why Jesus said, if you eat of me, you have eternal life. My life replaces the death in your pot just as the death in the pot was destroyed in Elisha's days. Every dangerous thing that you have mistakenly eaten, which is now ravaging and tearing off or breaking down your body's defense will be neutralized by eating the flesh of Jesus. Any form of poison responsible for partial blindness, deafness, stomach disorder, chest problems, heart disease, blocked arteries, every form of body poison, including AIDS, which is the breakdown of the immune system, will be swallowed up in victory by the meal of life. As you partake of the meal, see it as waging a total war against death. Look at whatever has not been planted by God in your life and just picture the rod of Moses and its dramatic manifestation before Pharaoh. Whatever that rod was in the hand of Moses is what the flesh of Jesus is in your stomach. It will swallow up every contrary sin there. When the meal was cast in the pot, death was terminated. Likewise, when the flesh arrives in your biological pot, every poison hovering around your entire system is neutralized instantly. See the flesh go through your lungs, liver, kidney, etc. to establish the creator's balance in all your organs. An eye opener. The flesh also serves as an eye opener. As we see in the encounter the disciples had after the resurrection of Jesus. And it came to pass, as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break and gave to them. And their eyes were opened, and they knew him, and he vanished out of their sight. Luke 24 verse 30 to 31. When Jesus gave them his flesh, their eyes were opened, and they knew him as the disciples ate the bread. The rod went through their bodies, swallowing up everything holding them down, and suddenly their partial blindness disappeared. This is one of the mysteries behind the breaking of bread. Based on this teaching, a number of outstanding testimonies have been recorded in our church. Brother Solomon, for example, went blind after a venomous snake spat in his eyes, but he stood on this revelation concerning the communion and received his sight. I quote his testimony as shared during one of our services at Freight Tabernacle. It was about 9 p.m. as I was entering a compound. The light went off and I had the instinct to turn back. 
but I took steps further. As soon as I entered, I felt that there was somebody standing behind the wall. Yet I took a step further and then I felt something sprinkled into my eyes twice. I pointed my touch to see who did that. Behold, it was a big cobra about to strike me. Instantly, I shouted, The blood of Jesus! And the snake turned the other way. And that was all I saw. My vision went blank. The second day, I was rushed to the hospital. And the doctor said the poison must have got into my system. We went back home and continued to pray. The next day in my house, I told my brother to prepare the communion based on the scripture that says when Jesus gave the communion to his disciples, their eyes were opened. He went ahead and prepared the communion and I took it. As soon as I took it, my eyes were opened. However, they were still swollen. Somebody then told me to get milk and use as an absorbent, which I did. By Wednesday, the swelling cleared. Restores mental dignity. Another eye-opening dimension of the flesh is that it imparts mental dignity. Jesus Christ is called the wisdom and the power of God. As he blessed the bread, broke it and gave the disciples to eat, the Bible says it affected their mentality. Their eyes were open and they knew him. Many people need such opening of eyes because every simple sin appears too difficult for too many people. Can you imagine that two of the disciples were walking and talking to Jesus about himself? Do you know what happened in Jerusalem to one man called Jesus of Nazareth? They were asking him. These two disciples had walked with Jesus and eat with him for three and a half years, but their eyes were closed. They did not know him until after he gave them his flesh. All the wonders of life have their roots in the wisdom of God. So when God opens your eyes in a particular area, his wonders attend to the insight you have received. The miracle meal enhances the opening of the eyes of your understanding. When you see a spiritually dull Christian, one who does not know the will of God and how to walk in it and is a daily concern, one of the treatments he needs is the miracle meal. Just serve him the communion. His eyes will be opened and he will know what to do. His struggles will end. No matter how impossible any situation seems, Jesus knew what he was going to do. John 6 verse 6 At every communion table, there is a supernatural opening of your eyes that connects you to the wisdom of God, which in turn commands the wonders, miracles of God. I have said it several times that I have never needed to pray about my family. Why? Because I know what to do to keep it running peacefully and it has been doing so. I cannot pray for money for this ministry. Never. Why? Because I know what to do. It is no secret. I have shared it openly many times. I have written it in most of my books. But just like the disciples could not recognize Jesus even when he sat in front of them, some people will still not understand what to do to get the same results I get until their eyes are supernaturally opened. Until understanding comes, there can be no impact. Take the flesh of Jesus to open your eyes to 
all issues relating to your desires from the word of God. Brother Idou, whose testimony is shared below, did it just before the communion was served during one of the communion services. The bishop said, what you need to break forth in business is not money but an idea that was sunk into me and turned me on. Then God gave me an idea. I got home, gathered the stipends from my industrial training program and went to the market to buy some men's fabrics. I started selling them to my colleagues at work and I began making good profit. Along the line, my boss called me and said, that is a smart idea. With time, we came together and God gave us another idea. We agreed to start servicing supply orders. By the end of that year, I had 21,000 Naira from supplying men's fabric and other materials and 38,000 Naira from supplying petroleum products, all amounting to 59,000. I simply traded with ideas and they were multiplying. I give God all the glory. As you partake of his flesh, every mental degradation, mental blockage, loss of memory, and so on will be cured and there will be a resounding restoration of mental dignity. The blood. Every person's state of being is traceable to the content of his blood. The life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus 17 verse 11. I believe that is why Jesus introduced the mystery of of the communion to give you and I mastery over all challenges. I am told that the white blood capsules are the soldiers of the body that help to attack every stranger in the system. If white connotes righteousness and Christ is the ultimate of righteousness, I see his blood as the spiritual soldier in your body. It launches a divine attack on any satanic manifestation or what I refer to as buying and selling in your body. This is what one mother, Mrs. F. Bello, used to flush out a foreign object in her little daughter's system. I was in my house one day when the children shouted, Mommy, water, I asked. Water for what? They said, my little girl had swallowed a 50 copper coin. As soon as I remembered the blood of Jesus, I was at rest. I asked my children to bring me a cup of water, which I sanctified to be the blood of Jesus and prayed. After praying, I addressed the 50 cobble she had swallowed. You 50 cobble, you are a stranger, and a stranger is not permitted to live in God's temple. Therefore, as my daughter takes this blood of Jesus, you must come out. I gave her the blood I had sanctified to drink. On Thursday, I came from the communion service believing strongly that if my daughter took the communion again, the stranger would be flushed out. She took the communion, and on Friday, when I came back from work, I met my elder sister, who said, Mommy, congratulations, and I replied, God is good. She then told me my daughter had excreted the 50 copper coin. God is faithful. When Jesus gave the disciples his blood, he said, This is my blood. As often as you take it, you are doing it in remembrance of me. You will be living like me, and whatever could not flaw me will never be found 
in you or be able to bring you down. Whatever could not resist me will not be able to resist you. Luke 22 verse 19 to 20, 1 Corinthians 11 to 25, paraphrased. Exempts from satanic assaults. The blood of Jesus can be likened to the Passover blood in Egypt. Wherever the angel of death saw the blood, he passed over. In that situation, the blood of the lamb was for the exemption of God's people from the evil befalling others around them. That blood was put on their doorposts. But now we are talking about the blood you are drinking and absorbing into your body. Jesus is the Passover lamb of the new covenant and drinking his blood is the seal of exemption from the wickedness of the devil. 1 Corinthians 5 verse 7 Everything was done to bring Israel out of Egypt. Yet Pharaoh would not let go until God introduced the blood weapon. Then Pharaoh was urgent upon them to live. The blood of lambs brought them out of Egypt, and none of the diseases of Egypt could follow them. After an encounter with the blood of Jesus in the miracle meal, none of the diseases ravaging the world will be able to follow you ever again. That is the power in the blood of Jesus. It is the seal of our covenant exemption from all satanic assaults. Covenant stronghold. Another picture of the blood is seen in Zechariah 9 verses 9, 11, and 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. He is just, and having salvation, lowly, and riding upon an ass, and upon a colt, the fall of an ass. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit, wherein is no water. Turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope, even today. Do I declare that I will render double unto thee. The blood covenant here is a stronghold against all satanic assaults. In the book of Job, we are shown the validity of the blood. His flesh is consumed away that it cannot be seen, and his bones that were not seen stick out yea his soul draweth near unto the grave and his life to the destroyer if there be a messenger with him an interpreter one among a thousand to show unto man his uprightness then he is gracious unto him and saith deliver him from going down to the pit i have found a ransom his flesh shall be fresher than a child's he shall return to the days of his youth job 33 verse 21 to 25 god has found a ransom for us in the person of jesus christ by the blood price he paid jesus is the ransom for the entire world and his blood is the ultimate price paid to make you enjoy the ultimate life he came and shed his blood that all may have life more abundantly john 10 verse 10b when he drained his blood on the cross the earth could not stand it the earth quaked the rocks rent graves were opened and many dead the saints which slept arose matthew 27 verse 50 to 52 
similarly as that blood gets into your body everything holding you down will quick everything trying to pull you to the grave will be destroyed anything dead in your system will be fully restored to life by the power of the blood every zero sperm count dead womb dead ovaries whatever is called dead will be quickened back to life by the power in the blood contained in this miracle meal the power in the blood is what cured a brother's impotence it quickened that which was dead brother abiodu was so grateful to god he came out openly to share his testimony to glorify god after having two children i was attacked by the devil two years ago i began suffering from impotency as i couldn't spend more than three minutes with my wife i came to church for the holy communion service after taking it i began praising god and suddenly felt a gentle breeze blow upon me i became so weak that i had to sit down thick sweat like blood began to come out of me i didn't know what had happened till i got home when i met with my wife i discovered that i had been supernaturally energized my potency has now been restored when the devil waged war in heaven the bible says they overcame him satan by the blood of the lamb revelation 12 verse 11 every sickness has the devil as its source and the blood of jesus is the answer to all satanic uprisings jesus is the blood of the everlasting covenant as we saw in zechariah 9 verse 9 to 10 so whatever god has committed himself to is connected to us by that blood the story of redemption in isaiah 53 tells us among other things that surely our sicknesses he carried and as for our pains he bar the burden of them verse 4 the emphasis new testament a uh, translation j b rotherham the king james version of the same scripture says he hath borne our griefs jesus came and carried what you should have carried so you don't have to carry it any longer when he carried the death sentence of barabbas he barabbas did not have to die anymore jesus has carried every sickness and every pain that you should have borne in your life so you don't have to suffer them again because the life of the flesh is in the blood the strength vigor and vitality that christ exemplified and manifested becomes your portion as you drink his blood it infuses eternal life into your system the mystery of the blood in the miracle meal is the duplication of christ inside the saints enabling them to live the god order of life can christ's kidney fail can his liver malfunction can jesus bones be irreparable whatever is contrary to the dignity of the life of jesus cannot survive the power that his blood conveys to your body a most balanced diet by now i expect that you have a proper understanding of the blood and the flesh of jesus christ it is a most balanced diet an unbeatable combination in spiritual warfare the blood is the answer to every satanic assault and the flesh is the covenant antidote 
for every psychological imbalance and body poison. This kind of understanding is what gives you automatic access to your benefits of divine health. Taking the flesh and blood is not enough. Taking it with understanding is what guarantees outstanding results. It is Jesus' free offer of redemption which constitutes an eternal insurance for spiritual and mental soundness as well as physical fitness. Chapter 3 Medical Value Many are crying today. We wish we were in Europe. We wish we were in America. Oh, if only we were very rich. Why? Because they face health challenges and consider the Western world to be places where medical expertise is readily available. But according to Jeremiah 8 verse 19 to 20, such people are only provoking God to anger by being envious of those who are in a far country. Behold the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people because of them that dwell in a far country. Is not the Lord in Zion? Is not her king in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their graven images and with strange vanities? The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people am I hurt. I am black. Astonishment has taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? Jeremiah 8 verse 19 to 22. There is nothing in a far country that is not available in Zion. God is asking, why are you wishing you were somewhere else? Why are you running after native doctors and crying after specialists? Is not the Lord in Zion? Is your king not at hand? There is nothing in a far country comparable with what Zion has to offer. There is a balm in Gilead, but the people are still battered, buffeted, oppressed, and shattered because the balm has been ignored and the physician has been disregarded. To paraphrase the scripture quoted above, God is saying, I am hurt, I am bothered, I am affected. These people don't recognize the physician, nor do they appreciate the balm. That is why they remain in their sickness. Who is this great physician? The great physician. In the story of the man sick with palsy, Jesus introduced himself as the physician the sick have been waiting for. He said he has come to call the sick and to heal them. They that behold need not a physician, but they that are sick. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Matthew 9 verse 12 to 13. In this account, Jesus introduced himself as the great physician. That is why we say, in Jesus' name, every knee must bow. He has paid the price for your total health, and his blood is the seal of your redemption. Matthew 20 verse 28 gives us another picture of the great physician. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. Job 33 verse 21 to 24 also gives an understanding of Jesus Christ as a ransom for your well-being. His flesh is consumed away. 
that is cannot be seen and his bones that were not seen stick out yea his soul draweth near unto the grave and his life to the destroyers if there be a messenger with him an interpreter one among a thousand to show unto man his uprightness then he is gracious unto him and saith deliver him from going down to the pit i have found a ransom jesus gave himself as a ransom for many and when you are born again you are numbered among those many you are freed from the torment of the destroyer because god has found a worthy ransom in christ the pit cannot hold you and no sickness can consume your flesh or make your bones stick out i have presented to you the great physician the worthy lamb of god the acceptable ransom for the life of many jesus christ the son of the living god i will present to you one of the vital balms that he personally prescribed for you to enjoy health and vitality this is what is called the holy communion the miracle meal no sickness or disease can escape its power or potency when you understand the great physician and you embrace the great prescription you enjoy great deliverance the great prescription it is not enough to have a specialist as your family doctor you must also be willing to embrace his prescription in order to enjoy the benefits of his expertise in the same way if you accept jesus as your redeemer and physician you must take what he prescribes this is what he came to offer i am the living bread which came down from heaven if any man eat of this bread he shall live forever and the bread that i will give is my flesh which i will give for the life of the world the jews therefore strove among themselves saying how can this man give us his flesh to eat then jesus said unto them verily verily i say unto you except ye eat the flesh of the son of man and drink his blood ye have no life in you who so eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood has eternal life and i will raise him up at the last day for my flesh is meat indeed and my blood is drink indeed he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and i in him as the living father has sent me and i live by the father so he that eateth me even he shall live by me john 6 verse 51 to 57 jesus has introduced himself as the physician now he introduces to us the balm for our total health eat his flesh and drink his blood you will not experience any disease throughout your stay on the earth jesus said when you eat his flesh and drink his blood you will live by him in other words i will live in you i will live out my life inside you you will be possessed with my strength you will carry my kind of grace and exhibit my kind of vigor john 6 verse 56 to 57 paraphrased i am not bragging i am only making my boast in the lord my body has never received drip once just recognize the great physician embrace his great prescription and you will live a great life jesus offered himself to infuse life and replace death in the lives of men eating his flesh and drinking his blood is like having a blood transfusion in the hospital blood transfusion 
in the field of medicine, we understand that there is a process called blood transfusion and people go through it to maintain their health under certain conditions. This can be used to explain what happens at the communion table. For Jesus to say, drink my blood and eat my flesh so you can live by me means that the communion represents a spiritual blood transfusion. There is a transfusion of eternal life, that is divine life replacing natural life. I like to describe it as a union between the immortal and the mortal. Immortality swallowing up death in our mortality. What is being transfused is not natural but spiritual. So medical science may not be able to appreciate it. The communion is the highest form of spiritual administration as far as health is concerned, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus 17 verse 14. Sister Akimbode's testimony clearly attests to this. I had been coughing persistently for the past four years. During the communion service, the bishop said, You are taking the blood of Jesus and you are eating his flesh. The communion will be a blood transfusion unto you. Take and be free in Jesus' name. I cut the word blood transfusion. Immediately this dawned on me. I took the communion and the cough stopped instantly. Now I can sleep freely without coughing. I am really free from the oppression of the devil and his torments. Today, I am completely whole and free from the bondage of the spirit of cough. Jesus said, He that eateth me, even he shall live by me, meaning shall live like me. The implication of this is that whatever could not survive in the physical system of Jesus is not permitted to survive in your body. Jesus refers to his flesh as meat indeed. That means it is the ultimate medication and his blood, which is drink indeed, is the ultimate treatment. The manna the Israelites ate in the wilderness for 40 years preserved them through all the hazardous weather. There was no record of fever, typhoid, malaria, headache, kidney failure, etc. And Jesus said that manna is nothing in value compared to what he has presented to us. His flesh and blood is not in the class of manna. It is far superior to what they ate in the wilderness. When you are spiritually transfused, Jesus is simply transmitting his order of life into you. So if Jesus was not a victim of fever, HIV, cancer, leukemia, heart disease, etc., then when you are transfused with his blood, whatever could not be found in him will no longer be found in you. This truth is what Brother Ogbogu used to eradicate an embarrassing skin disease that had plagued him for 10 years. In 1985, I discovered that I had this skin discoloration, but I did not know what its name was. I ignored it until 1990 when it began to come out seriously and became embarrassing. I consulted my family doctor who said it was a skin disease and said I should go for a skin test. Last year, I came down to Lagos and joined this ministry. In one of the Thursday communion services, Bishop Oyedeko said, Whatever you want God to do for you through this communion, just declare it. And I said, 
God, this skin disease that has been on me for 10 years, I want it flushed out. I took the communion and went home. Later, I began to notice that I was purging. My system was flushing a lot of things out of my body. I wonder what was happening. It made me uncomfortable. I came back for another communion service and the Holy Spirit said to me, Speak that the Lord may dry up everything that is called skin disease on your skin. So I said, Lord, I want everything on my skin to be dried off. And that was the end. Today, everything caused skin disease has disappeared and my body is looking fresh. Only fools doubt proofs. Living by Jesus means that you will not be living on your own anymore. You will be living the Jesus kind of life here on earth. Divine engrafting. Apart from spiritual blood transfusion, the miracle meal is also a spiritual design for a divine engrafting. Jesus said, He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him. As the living Father has sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. John 6 verse 56 to 57 This means that as you partake of the flesh and the blood, you are grafted into the Son. So it is the life of the Son that begins to flow in you. Therefore, Whatever cannot handle the sun can no longer handle you. I would like you to see yourself in a laboratory, as it were, when taking the communion. Remember, Jesus said it is the vine and we are the branches. John 15 verse 5. So as you eat and drink the miracle meal, see the angelic technicians regrafting you into the vine so that the life of the vine begins to flow freely into your system. This means that every anti-redemptive thing will go out of your system as you ingest his flesh and blood. Now, with this picture of engrafting in your mind, let me ask you the following question. If Jesus was on the earth, Can you imagine him being tested positive of HIV? Can you imagine him testing positive for an enlarged heart or kidney failure? Can you imagine any biological reason that could have made it impossible for Jesus to have children? Just read Mrs. Olukunle's testimony and see how she overcame 10 years barrenness with the miracle mill. In 1987, I did the family planning program and stopped it in 1989. At our expected time for another baby, it refused to come. Everything got stagnated for 10 years. In 1998, I attended the Word of Faith Bible Institute, Wolfby. And I was able to understand the word more than ever before. I believed in the blood of Jesus. So at every communion service, I would ask God to remove blockage and dryness in my womb. In October 1999, my husband and I read the book Satan Get Lost as the book of the month. After reading the book, God spoke to him one night after the family altar to go on seven days fasting and prayer, rejoicing in him. He told me and I encouraged him to do it. He did it and finished on a Wednesday. We came to the communion service the next day, after which I missed my period. In the course of the pregnancy, I was asked to do a scan and it was shown that the baby was coming breech. 
This normally causes fear. But with the word of God, I was not afraid. I believe that God, who knew how I conceived, will see me through. So I began to confess safe, normal, and quick delivery. On the day of delivery, I took the communion and with the word of God revealed from Romans chapter 1 verse 16. I received power and was delivered of a bouncing baby girl safely. I even left the hospital same day. Jesus is the vine. You are the branches. He came as an extension of the Father and he was operating by the energy of heaven. Now he has connected us to himself by the mystery at the communion table. The communion is not some form of religious snack. It is what grafts you to the eternal dimension of life where the challenges of this world have no more power over you, where the enemy can reach you no more. Smith Wigglesworth had an unusual insight into this mystery in his time and was taking the miracle meal daily till the time he galloped to the other side at the age of 87 he did not suffer any form of breakdown jesus said in john 6 verse 58 that he that eats his flesh shall live forever that means you are not programmed to die of sickness and disease that is why believers do not die they only sleep so expect that on the day you are going you will go with a smile after blessing your children's children to the third and fourth generation the miracle meal is not just designed to heal disease it is the only known medium for dealing with the harassments of death field of specialization in this chapter i have introduce to you the great physician and his great prescription let us now examine the coverage of his expertise again in the medical world there are specialists who handle different kinds of sickness and when you go to one consultant he says well that's not my field i will refer you to someone else but such is not the case with the great physician as we see in the scriptures the bible records that when the even was come they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils and he cast out the spirit with his word and healed all that were sick matthew 8 verse 16 also matthew 12 verse 15 we read that great multitudes followed him and he healed them all jesus healed all that were sick all means everything less nothing so this physician is a general in the field of medicine no wonder when he gave the disciples power he instructed them to go after all manner of sickness and all manner of disease matthew 10 verse 1 jesus is an all manner physician who does not need to refer cases to anyone else it is the end of all human search for total health there is no one else to refer to after him the great physician is concerned about your total well-being in 3 john 1 verse 2 god says i wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as thy soul prospereth it is saying here that he cares about your life here on earth and wants you to succeed flourish and live a healthy life three-dimensional effect from the prayer of apostle paul in first thessalonians 5 verse 23 we understand that man like god is three-dimensional 
and God is interested in all three parts of man, his spirit, soul, and body. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 23 the miracle meal is one of the great physician's covenant provisions for ensuring that you be in health and prosper in your spirit, soul, and body. A healthy spirit. Sin is a sickness of the spirit, and the soul that sinneth shall die. Ezekiel 18 verse 4. To prevent such death, God has given us an antidote for sin. And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without shedding of blood is no remission. Hebrews 9 verse 22. The blood of Jesus is God's antidote for sin. In Hebrews 9 verse 13 to 14, we read that, For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctify to the purifying of the flesh how much more shall the blood of christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot to god purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living god the blood of jesus has power to sanctify our conscience and by doing so he helps us to maintain a healthy spirit the blood of jesus helps to flush the conscience of his people from every dead work when jesus christ inaugurated the holy communion before his departure in matthew 26 verse 26 to 28 he described his blood as the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Verse 28. When you take the miracle meal, the blood of Jesus has power to terminate every bad habit you want dead in your life. Since the life of the flesh is in the blood, it means that your lifestyle is traceable to the blood that runs in your veins so whatever habit has been impossible for you to humanly deal with can be overcome by the blood of jesus running in your veins see how the blood worked in the lives of these two people free from the spirit of laziness i've always known myself to be a weak person i couldn't do strenuous jobs and the little I do, I get tired very quickly. Twice I collapsed just because I fasted till 6 p.m. I also fainted during a March pass in school. When I got to the higher institution, I also missed my early hour lectures because I always woke up late. I feel very sleepy almost every time. It was terrible but I couldn't help it. My parents and sisters complained, but I just couldn't stop the terrible habit. My second name became Ole, the Yoruba word for lazy. On Thursday, 8th of August, during the communion service, the bishop said, if you're not ready to walk, don't take this communion. It is an energy giving drug. I caught that, and that was it. My life changed. I began to wake up at 5 a.m. I hardly have any siesta now. I can't comprehend where this strength came from. I now work very hard at home, and everybody now respects me. I know it is a lot doing, and it is marvelous in my sight. Aki yoye no di. Free from dirty habits. Eleven years ago, I realized some funny behavior I had. Whenever I finished a meal, 
I found myself vomiting the food and eating my vomit. As a child, I wasn't irritated much, so it just cleft to me until I could not control it anymore. It then occurred frequently and at anywhere. At times, I'll be in the company of friends and it would just seize me. I had to excuse myself or soil the floor with it. As an unbeliever then, I had no power to put this habit under control. I did not even know it was an affliction. Early this year, I contacted Christ and everything in me changed. But this affliction did not stop because I didn't take it as an affliction. During one of the midweek services, the bishop talked about the blessings and curses of Deuteronomy 28. And it concluded by saying, anything that is not in Christ that is in you is an affliction of the devil. Then I reasoned within myself. This must stop, but it did not. Of all I did, it did not stop either. During the Easter Sunday service, the bishop gave 50% discount on all Dominion books as a blessing. I had longed to buy the book, The Blood Triumph, which I couldn't do to the crowd at the bookstore. The following Tuesday communion service, I sat next to a friend and as we were discussing, a boy walked up to her and handed a brand new copy of the Blood Triumph to her. I desired to read the book. In fact, I was obsessed with it. Before she finished writing her name on it, I had asked her to lend me the book. She was adamant and refused, but I pleaded and finally forced her against her wish, and she did. That night, I woke up and glanced through its chapters. The next day, I read it and studied it again. Of all I remembered while studying the book, the bishop said, The blood is God's last card. Then it struck me. If all have failed, the blood can and will heal me of this age-long affliction. I took some water, prayed over it, and declared it to be the blood. I sprinkled my room, myself, and drank the rest of it, prophesying that the blood cannot fail. Jesus has taken my infirmities. I am not a thief. This affliction is not mine. I return it to the sender. Till today, that dirty habit has never appeared again. Praise God, the blood triumphed again. Dan Amudo F. When Jesus was on the earth, no sin was traceable to him. He even stood up and asked the crowd one day, which one of them could convict him of any sin? John 8 verse 46 Jesus was the sinless Lamb of God. It was in his blood to live right and pure, truthful and faithful. As Paul put it, He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 It is this same Jesus whose blood is transfused into you when you partake of the miracle meal and he said, He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me and I in him and as the living Father has sent me and I live by the Father. So he that eateth me, even he shall live by like me. John 6 verse 56 to 57 A healthy mind When Jesus was on the earth, everyone was amazed at his wisdom. He had a unique mind and displayed 
an enviable dimension of wisdom. It is recorded in Matthew 13 verse 54 and Mark 6 verse 2 that people who saw his actions and heard him speak were astonished and remarked from whence has this man these things and what wisdom is this which is given unto him that even such mighty works are wrought by his hands mark 6 verse 2 the blood of jesus in the miracle mill has power to transform your mental faculty from ordinary to extraordinary among your peers after his resurrection jesus sat to eat with his disciples and took bread broke it and gave it to them as he did so their eyes were opened and they knew him luke 24 verse 30 to 31 their understanding was enlightened jesus gave them bread his flesh and as it entered their mouth it affected their soul that is their mental faculty the miracle meal guarantees a productive mind that will make people marvel at your understanding healthy body finally the communion guarantees a strong and unique body for as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup ye do show the lord's death till he come first corinthians 11 verse 26 as often as you take the miracle meal you are showing and telling the world he died my death so that i can live his life he was broken for me that none of my bones shall ever be broken his body was battered so that my own should be kept intact this is what mrs ifezue tapped into that prevented her from having a caesarean operation in the ninth month of my pregnancy the doctor insisted that i must do an x-ray after doing it the report came that my pelvis is narrow the baby was too big and i will not be able to make it by natural birth so i raised the report up and prayed after praying on the report i went to the doctor's office declaring that i was not going to do any operation i went home and told my husband who said whose report would you believe i said the lord's report he said let us go for communion service when i came for communion service pastor faith oyodeko was ministering and it was as if she was talking to me as she said whose report would you believe my husband just looked at me and laughed immediately i was convinced that as soon as i take the communion every yoke would be broken and as i did all my nerves became relaxed the week after i was in the clinic and another doctor attended to me referring to the report that i wouldn't make it without an operation because the baby was too big nevertheless i declared again that i will make it because i know the god i serve then i went on a fast the next day and worshiped god in a way i had never done before after the worship session i went into labor before we got to the hospital the baby came out right there in the car when we arrived at the hospital the baby's weight was checked it was 4.2 kg the doctors were surprised that i had no tear nor cut i was examined for internal bleeding but there was none god did it and i give him all the glory this woman had something to show all the medical personnel just as jesus said that 
as often as you eat his flesh and drink his blood in remembrance of him, you will have something to show for it. You will be showing the validity of his death till he comes. Whatever he died for will be evidenced in your life to show that he did not die in vain. Covenant Toast for Total Health When Jesus said, This is my flesh, he was saying, I am giving you my divinely prepared body for your own weekly one. In John 4 verse 31, the disciples were hungry and went to town to buy some food. When they returned, they met Jesus preaching and they implored him to take some food. But Jesus said they should not bother. They could go on without food. He said, I have food to eat that you know nothing about. John 4 verse 32 paraphrased. In the days of the early Christians, sickness was a stranger in their assembly because they were addicted to partaking of the flesh and the blood of Christ on a daily basis. This mystery gave them mastery over every sickness and disease. The great prescription of the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ is the great physician's covenant toast for your total health, spirit, soul, and body. This great physician is not just experimenting. He is the manufacturer of man. For all things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. John 1 verse 3 Jesus is the great specialist in handling his great products. In him was a light, and that light was the light of men. And that light shines in darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. John 1 verse 5 Virtue always flowed from Jesus. People touched his clothes, and they were all healed. They only touched his clothes, not even his flesh, and they were healed. Now you are not just touching, you are eating his flesh and drinking his blood, so your case is settled. Chapter 4 Dying by Faith Faith is a must. It is not enough to take the blood and the flesh of Jesus Christ. It will only deliver to you according to your depth of faith not according to the volume you eat or drink of it. Two blind men went to Jesus, crying to have their sight restored, and he asked them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said, Yeah, Lord. Then Jesus touched their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were opened. Matthew 9 verse 27 to 30. This story shows that coming around the table is not enough for the delivery of your desires. You must come believing, otherwise nothing is delivered. Every time you come to Jesus for a miracle, he will always ask you the faith question. Believe ye that I am able to do this? As a matter of fact, no spiritual exercise has value without faith. As Apostle Paul tells us, Whatsoever is not of faith is sin. It is dead. It cannot deliver. Romans 14 verse 23 Without faith, giving offering, praying, anointing your head, or taking communion etc is a dead activity it can never enjoy productivity what is faith faith is not a mystical subject faith is a tangible and describable force one of its greatest definitions comes from romans 4 verse 20 to 21 which speaks of the abrahamic covenant 
The Bible says Abraham staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was able also to perform. From this statement, faith can be defined as being fully convinced that God is able to do whatever he has declared. To have faith is to be persuaded that what God has promised, he is able also to perform. When you are fully persuaded, you commit divine performance because blessed is she that believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Luke 1 verse 45 Having faith is being fully persuaded to a point where you do all that the world commands with delight, to the point where it becomes your thought pattern and what you speak of freely without wavering. Every impossibility is at the mercy of faith. Faith is like the husband of impossibilities and when they meet they give birth to possibilities. Anytime impossibility comes across faith, it will be converted to possibility. There is a price tag on every miracle and faith is that price. The woman with the issue of blood kept pressing through the crowd in her weakness until she reached out and touched the border of Jesus' garment and she was healed immediately after jesus identified her as the one who provoked virtue to flow from himself he said to her thy faith hath made thee whole go in peace luke 8 verse 43 to 46 that woman's faith made her whole not her struggle to press through the crowd jesus said to mary and martha when he went to raise Lazarus up from the dead, if thou wouldest believe, thou wouldest see the glory of God. John 11 verse 40. In other words, no matter how dead the situation is, if I can see faith in you, I will turn it around. When your faith in the miracle meal is secure, your inheritance of super health becomes automatic as many as believed jesus john said to them gave he power to become the sons of god john 1 verse 12 so what you believe is what you automatically become the place of understanding ask the holy spirit to help your deep understanding of the miracle meal at all times. Jesus said that is his ministry in John 16 verse 12 to 13. I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How bit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Understanding is very important, and it plays a key role in the application of your faith. Understanding is the eye of the mind, the force that converts words into pictures. As understanding converts the word you hear or read into vivid pictures, faith becomes automatic and what you believe you supernaturally become. Faith remains the ever-winning force in the race of life. The foolishness of faith is the winning ticket in the race of life. Or how do you explain how a person whose eyes were blinded by snake poison that defiled medical treatment, could take the miracle meal in faith and have his sight restored. 
how can you put something in the stomach and it opens your eyes on the outside that is no biological connection but a spiritual one the man was stupid enough to embrace the foolishness of faith and it delivered a miracle to him most of the demands of scripture do not weigh much on the intellectual balance but they supernaturally connect you to the power that makes all things possible your faith is important in determining the flow of divine virtue to you what is faith it is being fully persuaded that god is able to perform what he has promised it is a living force drawn from the living word to produce living proofs faith is not just believing that god can do something faith is being moved to prove that you believe and when you are moved to act on what he commands god is committed to perform if there is faith in your heart and you are moved with that faith to partake of the miracle meal god will be committed to establish you in his design for great exemption i would like you to see the flow of life from the vine into your body as you partake of the miracle meal see that flow flushing out everything that is contrary to your total health see the blood of jesus that you drink as your covenant initiation into the realm of divine health that no sickness or disease will be associated with you anymore as you partake of the bread which is his flesh see every mental blockage being destroyed as your eyes become opened the greater your faith in the miracle meal the greater results you will experience and you will become a wonder to the world around you chapter 5 how to prepare jesus himself practically demonstrated the preparation and application of the miracle meal in case the disciples were wondering if they would need to cut up his body after his death to get at his flesh and blood jesus must have thought it necessary to demonstrate what it meant and as they were eating jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said take it this is my body and he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying drink ye all of it for this is my blood of the new testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins but i say unto you i will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when i drink it new with you in my father's kingdom Matthew 26 verse 26 to 29 We see from the verses quoted above that as Jesus and his disciples were eating he took from the bread they were eating and broke it calling it his flesh he did not send anyone to go and import or buy special bread from any country or location neither was there any need to bake some form of special bread for the commoner jesus did not ask if it was leavened or unleavened bread they were eating whatever type of bread is normally taken in your home or locality is all that is required taking the cup they were drinking from them jesus said drink ye all of it for this is my blood i will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine verse 27 to 29 he called what they were drinking at that very moment his blood of the new testament it was not a specially brewed drink imported from anywhere he did not ask if it was from jerusalem or not 
Jesus referred to the contents of the cup as the fruit of the vine. So it was a fruit drink that he called his blood. That means this blood is available anywhere people live. You don't have to order for the drink specially. Anything you drink in your home is communion mystery worthy. It is juice from any fruits of the vine and any bread available which have been blessed that become the blood and the body of Jesus. It is the bread and the drink that are blessed in faith that represents the flesh and blood for the totality of man's health. Therefore, the religion of looking for special bread from Jerusalem, Bethlehem, Judea, or anywhere else does not arise. Preparation of the miracle meal is as simple as A, B, C. What they were eating and what they were drinking at that very instant is what Jesus took and called his body and his blood. They were not preparing any special service. As they were eating a regular meal, Jesus said, Hey, stop, voice. This is my body, which was broken. Come on, eat it now. And he grabbed the cup and did the same thing. This is my blood. You are permitted to serve communion at home. Jesus said as often. That means when there is an anti-covenant or anti-communion manifestation in your system, use the communion to treat it. Physical weakness, for example, is an anti-communion effect, so you attack it with the miracle meal. As you prepare the meal by yourself, say, Jesus said, he that eateth by me shall live by me. I take on the strength of Christ. Then just get up and walk around again like a lion. It never fails. One day, our first child was troubled with stuffy nose. Small baby, cold. I just smiled. I went to the fridge, grabbed the things prepared the communion. This is his flesh. This is his blood. Gave them to the baby. Every stranger in his nose dried up. After Jesus died, priesthood became open to all. So you do not need to wait for a priest to serve communion. Don't watch a breakdown. Convert it to break through by laying hold on the mill for miracle. Something to show. Paul supplies more information concerning Jesus' instructions on the miracle mill as he explains what taking it in remembrance of Jesus means. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 26 The miracle meal is designed to enhance the reality of the work of Christ's death in the life of the believer. People will begin to see the value of his death in your health, strength and vitality till he comes. You will have something to show for taking it. Something tangible and provoking in the camp of the enemy to show in your body. Earlier on in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 20, Paul revealed this strong word from the Lord. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. There is a blood price on your life. If you are born again and that blood offers you the right to a super healthy life. The price that Jesus paid by his death on the cross entitles you to spiritual and physical fitness, glorifying God in both your body and spirit.
look beyond healing. Jesus was hung on a tree and by that hanging the curse of life was averted. Galatians 3 verse 13. So every curse disappears at the instance of the communion. Before he died, he was flogged. Stripes were laid on him and the Bible says by his stripes you were healed. Isaiah 53 verse 5. Blood came out of his body so you can live an intact, healthy and agile life. A bitter drink was given to Jesus as he hung on the cross so you can experience sweet things in your own life. His clothes were taken off. He was stripped naked so that you will never know nakedness in your life. These are all direct products to show that you take his flesh and drink his blood. The covenant communion is not just for your health. It is to connect you to the reality of redemption. Anything contrary to that must go down in your life as you take the miracle meal. Take in the miracle meal as often as you can in remembrance of Jesus is renewing your covenant with God on the platform of redemption. So look beyond healing. Expect every benefit of redemption to be brought your way. Take it often. As often as you take the blood in remembrance of him, you re-establish this reality and people will see you and say, Blessed be God for that man, woman, home, where have never heard a cry of sickness in their family. They are unique on this street. Their case is different. The miracle meal will make you always have something to show that Jesus did not die in vain. It is meant to be an awesome thing to show all the devils that somebody already died for you. So when you take his flesh and you drink his blood, you will be demonstrating the reality of the price paid for you to glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are his. You become unkillable because it is the only anti-death drug in the world. You can't beat it. Eating the miracle meal is an invitation to a world of hopes that truly Jesus took away your infirmities and bore your griefs and your sins are forgiven. Everything Jesus died for will begin to find enviable expression in your life. Apart from the congregational communion, you have the scriptural right to administer the communion in your homes. That is God's strategy for keeping us strong, healthy, alive, and set apart from the sickly world that we live in. Table manners. Although you are to take the flesh and blood of Jesus often, it should not be taken anyhow. Eating and drinking unworthily. Paul the Apostle said in 1 Corinthians 11 verse 27 to 30, Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. Some religious people have taken hold of the words worthily and unworthily to make communion look like an occultic thing and they keep on discriminating against who can take it or not take it. You need to understand 
the context within which Apostle Paul made that statement. The Corinthian people, because they were mostly pagans, transferred most of their Egyptian ways to the church. There was usually fighting whenever it was communion time because some people would have finished all the bread and the wine without minding if others got or not. So the unworthiness was not about you must not wear shoes, you must not wear earrings. The unworthiness here is approaching the table of the Lord as a carnal man. Paul had to tell them to eat at home before coming because the communion was not meant to be taken as dinner. Just imagine some fellows in the Corinthian church may leave their work, take their family, and rush to where the communion was and finish everything. By the time the priest comes, he can't find anything because some families have come to settle their meal there. That was how unruly they were because of their pagan background. That is why Paul had to admonish them to wait for one another. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home, that ye come not together unto condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 33 to 34 When taken in such unruly and unworthy manner, Paul says, What is supposed to give you strength will make you a victim of weakness. It is supposed to give you health, but see now you are a victim of sickness. It is supposed to elongate your life, but see now you die in the afternoon. 1 Corinthians 11 verse 29 to 30 paraphrased. The word sleep in verse 30 does not mean siesta, but death. What does this point to? It means that the miracle meal is designed for strength, health, and longevity if taken with the correct spiritual perspective. Paul is saying, don't mistake the meal for just any snack. Rather, those who understand its mystery must not expect to become weak or sickly, and they must expect to fulfill their days on earth. These are direct products of taking the blood and the flesh that constitutes the miracle meal. Approach the table with a holy reverence of understanding that it is a mysterious union between mortality and immortality. God connecting the human with the divine the height of immunity against all satanic assaults. The communion is not the doctrine of any church. It is the wisdom of God contained in scriptures which guarantees you a great future. Chapter 6 The Meal Ticket The miracle meal or communion is the exclusive preserve of the disciples. It is one of the mysteries of the kingdom and Jesus tells us in Mark 4 verse 11 that kingdom mysteries are not for everybody. They are limited to those who are within. But for them that are without, it is done in parables so that they'll hear and not understand. They will see but they will not perceive. See also Matthew 13 verse 11 to 14, Luke 8 verse 10. If you are a child of God, then you are one of those who are within, and this makes you a candidate for the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. It is not magic. There is a difference between mysteries and stories. Only the sons of God can access the mysteries. Any fool can understand stories 
but only the sons of God can access the mysteries. You should not mistake the stories for the mysteries. Stories are lifeless. The Bible says the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. So you must aim at catching the spirit behind every scripture. Catching that spirit is accessing the mystery. Kingdom mysteries are not magic or mystics. They are simply kingdom principles in scriptures. For instance, Jesus qualified the parable of the sower as a mystery and all it contained was a principle of the kingdom. The mysteries of the kingdom are things that can be understood and applied to real life but it takes the Spirit of God to gain mastery of those principles. The mystery of the Holy Communion, like all other kingdom principles, is for victorious living and abundant life here on the earth. Jesus gave it to his disciples as they were eating. Matthew 26 verse 1 to 30 The benefit of his flesh and blood are meant only for the living, not the dead. His word says, He that has the Son has life, while he that has not the Son has no life in him. Until you have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you do not have life. And the dead don't require the virtue in the miracle meal. God hates waste. He does not lavish his miracles on people. Don't settle for crumbs. Jesus saw the Syrophoenician woman who came to him for her tormented daughter's healing. That divine healing is the children's bread and it is not right to cast it to the dogs. The woman refusing to be rejected said, but dogs can eat from the crumbs that fall from the master's table, provoking Jesus to say, O woman, great is thy faith. Matthew 15 verse 28 The health that men and women enjoy outside the body of Christ can be likened to crumbs that fall from the table. All that doctors can do at best is to attempt a repair. Only the great physician has the license to restore and his ministry of restoration speaks through the communion, the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ. That which you cannot obtain from a far country will be delivered into your hands through the miracle meal of the communion. It will bring the release of creative miracles and diverse surgical operations. As the redeemed of the Lord, you have a right to the table and a right to live a super healthy life. Crumbs don't fall from the table every day, do they? Now, if the dogs in your house will depend only on crumbs, how many of them will still be alive today? You prepare food specially for your pets because you don't want them to die. So hanging around for crumbs is waiting for your health to totally crumble. What you need is to secure the ticket to access the table and that meal ticket is freely available through Jesus Christ. You must be born again. Until you have Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you don't have a right to the table. That is why when the woman came to Jesus and said her daughter was grievously tormented of the devil and needed divine help, Jesus said miracle healing was children's food and must not be given to dogs. Matthew 15 verse 26. That is why he said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. John 3 verse 3. Salvation is the meal ticket 
and key to endless access to the supernatural nutritional value of the miracle meal the wisdom of god for your exemption from all plagues and crises the reason why many miss this wisdom is because of its simplicity it appears too cheap to be real and so many complex and complicated people don't regard it they say is that all with disdain just like Naaman the leper captain of the Syrian army Naaman was told by the prophet Elijah to go and dip himself in the river Jordan seven times and he will be healed but he said no way there are cleaner waters where I am coming from I have a swimming pool in my house how can I go and dip inside that river while well, his little servant girl said to him my father if he had told you to do something enormous and very great you would have done it why don't you obey this instruction and be made whole Naaman put the words spoken to work and he came out clean first kings 5 verse 1 to 14 paraphrased simple but powerful the power of salvation appears simple but it is real many have lived with adversities because they have not given place to the simplicity of the gospel apostle paul said for well, i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ for it is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believeth to the jews first and also to the greeks romans 1 verse 16 to every affliction in your body and mental blockage in your system will bow to this simple gospel of the miracle mill the devil capitalizes on the simplicity of the gospel to confuse ignorant people by saying how can you just take communion and say that what doctors have called incurable or terminal is healed but the foolishness of god is wiser than men and his weakness is stronger than men Naaman was initially too complex and sophisticated for the victory he was looking for but there was a servant nearby who said why not do it and he came back clean he heard the truth but until he did it he could not get results i call on you who have read up to this point of this book to be foolish enough to believe all i have been saying about the miracle mill if you want to enjoy the covenant of total health then you have to become connected and stay connected to the source by accepting and keeping jesus christ as your lord and savior one of the powerful mysteries of the miracle mill is the mystery of the duplication of christ inside the saints who receive it with faith as we embrace the realities of this practical truths and begin to walk in them we will begin to experience the miraculous expect from now that the beauty the color and the glory of redemption shall remain reflective in your life as you take the miracle meal with better understanding in jesus name amen